welcome to the podcast. My name is Melissa Lebelardi, and today I get to introduce you to another best of episode. Today we're going to hear an oh so good throwback recorded by Pastor Carter and Pastor Gary Ritchie of New Hope called Two Humility Reminders for the Highly Competent. I know I needed to hear this one again, so let's get right to it. Got a very special guest with me today in the studio, which is really only my office. It's Pastor Gary Ritchie. He's the pastor of New Hope Community Church in Round Lake Beach. And kind of a funny story, Gary and I planted our churches the same summer, about a block away from one another. And so I think right from the get-go, God kind of put us together, and he's been an awesome bro, walking together through the years, encouraging one another, praying for one another, and supporting one another in ministry. And Gary is always the life of the party, man. Whenever we go anywhere, whenever we're like on a trip or retreat together, you can be sure that it's going to be funny if Gary's at your table. So Gary, welcome to the show, man. Thanks. I like when people say that I'm funny because there's no pressure then to be funny. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. So, And don't let them lie to you. This is a lavish studio. Unbelievably nice in here. We spare no expense. Yeah. It's a couple million dollars. I think it's the drinking water came from Piggly Wiggly. So <laughs> yes. you can, that's how you know how you is know. where the water came from. <laughs> Sweet, man. Well, hey, well, there's... You could have poured it into like an Avion bottle for me. I sh- that's so what I that would be done. nice. Yep. Yeah. Today, there's so many things we could talk about, but we decided let's talk about two humility reminders for the highly competent. We want to talk specifically today to folks who you're like, man, I actually know that I'm I'm maybe a little good. Like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of good. I'm, 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 I feel like as I look around me, maybe, yeah, man, they're not as good as me. They're not as good as me. There's no question. God makes us, he gives us, he, he gives us a certain level of competence. But I think in ministry, it can be very dangerous because when we begin to compare ourselves to others, there's blind spots that we don't see. And Gary has a story about when he was first starting out in ministry. When we first did that church plant, when he was down the block from me, he was maybe getting into some of what he didn't entirely understand. He had started as a dude with a lot of ministry success. He was over at North Bridge, and things went pretty well. Gary, tell us about that. What was going well at that at that first opportunity at North Bridge? Why were you like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good? Well, yeah, I was on a staff at a church plant, and I'd been there since day one, and we had never been involved in church planting before. I didn't even know what it was going to be like. And now having been involved in church planting, I realized how rare this was. Basically, everything went great from the beginning. Yeah. It doesn't it wasn't like we never faced any challenges or anything like that. But the church immediately grew. Yeah. We immediately had a bunch of resources. Uh, a bunch of my friends came to Christ at that church. I was able to quickly come on staff and go full time. And basically anything we tried seemed to turn to gold. And as I tend to do. Which is awesome. Glory to God. Glory to God. But then there's stuff that goes maybe south in the soul maybe a little bit. Yeah. The problem was I, in my own heart, glory to Gary. Yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah. I'd never really been in an upfront role in a church before. And so um, getting responses from people, when you preach at a church and you're a young guy and I, I'm, I think I'm funny, people tell you how great you are all the time. That was wonderful. And if you're the associate pastor at a church, certain people will love to tell you how they like you better than the senior pastor. <laughs> That's a, there's, certain, there's a certain group of people, I don't know if you've ever been in this spot, who like to tell you, you know, we actually really like to come when you're preaching. And they think that that's a compliment and not like a sign of their own immaturity. And I took it as a compliment. <laughs> Just for the record, people have never told me that. Usually it's, <laughs> we understand that you are the senior pastor. We wish there was somebody else preaching. Well, and I think I have a little bit of an underdog mentality to myself. I'm not like a typically like great looking person. I'm a big guy. <laughs> I'm not from a Christian family. I've kind of came from, I felt like an outsider in church. I was the worst student in seminary. And yet I'm very competitive. And so I look for the things that I would have an advantage in. Yeah. And so I'm I'm I was funnier than our senior pastor. I'm a little more of a people person than him. I'm a better storyteller. Yeah. And those kind of things people tend to gravitate toward. And I would see myself an exaggerated version of myself because I would only see my successes and not see my weaknesses. And so you you told me the story you're you guys have this class and you'd, yeah. you're thinking, hey, everyone's going to go to Pastor Mark. He's a senior pastor. They're going to go see him. And instead, like all these people turn out to see Gary. Yes. And so, of course, what does that turn up in him? And everybody's susceptible to this, but it's the, the idea of 
I'm a little awesome. I'm, I'm a little awesome. Everybody's coming. This must be God's sign. I'm glad everyone finally sees. Well, and Mark and I would be, I think, in a not healthy way, sometimes pretty competitive. Yeah. And about all kinds of things. We'd, we'd play basketball. And I and he's in, if you've ever met Mark, he's in way better shape than me he's, as a much better athlete. And so I would look for some kind of edge, some kind of thing. And in my head, I was a little competitive. And so when we were up on stage together, yeah. if I was doing announcements or we, we did a couple of things, we team taught. I would have a little bit of an undercurrent of trying to win one over on him. Yeah. And he got to the point where he would say, he goes, I never want to start with you on stage because you'll go too far yeah. to win there. And yeah. I knew it was a get, I mean, and I recognized that, that that was a weakness in my character and yet my competitive spirit and my desire to, to be a little awesome yeah. would come out. Right. And, and, but at the same time, all my failures, all my lack of skills that I, things I didn't have, my lack of administrative skills or my ability to build systems, which doesn't really exist. They were covered over yeah. by his strengths, right. the strength of our staff, some of the situations that we were in, some of the benefits from the conference. And so I didn't feel, I didn't feel, I didn't feel those lacks. So there's, a, yeah. there's on some level an illusion going on. And I think this can go on in all of us. When you're, when you're a little bit competent, man, you can have a sense of self-sufficiency. If you've ever had thoughts of like, I don't know if they're going to do it as well as me, or, or I don't know if anyone can, can bring it the way I can bring it. And you're surrounded by other great people. I love that what Gary's pointing out, that sometimes people have strengths that are just lifting you where you would kind of suck, but you're not aware of it. So you're, you're in a little bit of this illusion, this, this delusion I mean, that things are going better than they are. Don't we all think our strengths are the most important strengths and our weaknesses are the least important weaknesses? Yeah, yeah. Right. And I, we tend to overemphasize what we I mean, whether it's your marriage or your ministry or your workplace, you see your own contributions because you know what you're doing all the time yeah. and you're not seeing what other people are doing. Yeah. You know, like I don't really do laundry at our house. It just sort of magically shows up in my drawers Yep, yep. or the food or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm see now I'm the cook. Right. And so I think, well, cooking's the main job. Right. We got to eat every day. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I'm like, well, hey, how do you want me to do this and this? I'm cooking tonight. I, hey, I'm the one who made dinner. Yeah. And never forgetting the fact that I'm wearing clothes because my wife, number one, probably bought them for me. Yeah. Keeps them clean and puts them in my drawers. And I think maybe, you know, some of us today need, need the reminder. Sometimes we can, the enemy's real and he brings accusation all the time. And sometimes we're part of a better team than we are realizing. And we should appreciate them a little bit more because sometimes we can be despising some of the ones around us. And we're like, bro, sister, like they're making you look a whole lot better than you would look if they weren't around picking up some of your slack that you don't even know that you have. So well, I would even push against people who had other strengths who were trying to help me. Yeah. And, and, and I think, and push that down and say, that's not very important. Yeah. You know, your administrative skill, your structure building right, skill right, right. isn't that important. You know, really, you're a dime a dozen, but a guy like me, you know how hard it is to find a guy like me? Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. and I, I, even though I wouldn't say that. Right, right. There was definitely, that was something the evil one would kind of put in my head a little bit and I would believe it because don't we want to feel special? Don't we want to feel like we're somebody particularly important? And I think this is where, you know, maybe to encourage some Sometimes the season of blessing where God is just, Gary's in this church where everything is going right, everything goes going terrific. Yes, we want to praise God for that. And at the same time, there can be a lot of profit and a lot of health when you are brought face to face with your weaknesses, which is, I feel like, where Gary went next. After the Northbridge season, you guys are really pumped, gifted man of God. You're going to go out and you're going to plant this church. People have already been coming to your class more than, you know, the senior pastors. <laughs> like, how can this go wrong, man? You go and, and, and you're raising money. Like, you are set up for success and God brings you into this season of, I'm going to bring you face to face with your weaknesses. Tell us about that. What happened? What were the difficult circumstances? How did God convince you? Actually, maybe not so much. Yeah. I mean, Northbridge had given us this huge help out the door. They had supported us a ton financially. We had people on our team who came with us and we decided that we were going to teach an English as a second language class in Round Lake to get to know people in the neighborhood. Our, our church uh, leans Latino. We were hoping to meet more Latinos. And on my team, I had uh, an older gentleman who was coming as a kind of an intern with us, a resident with us, who was uh, from Colombia. He and his family came. And then we also had, I, I, in my hubris, there was this guy who had a lot of problems, 
who was had a he had a criminal background, uh, had an addiction issue going on, and was not he was sort of giving lip service to Jesus in order to gain some access to some of the resources we had as a church and and then he he had started lying to people on our launch team and telling nice. them that he his daughter was in a life threatening situation what? to get money from them and then go gamble and i'm i'm a people pleaser and so we're trying to run this class it's not going real well we're trying to teach an alpha class and it's not going real well because it turns out the people who don't know me don't know how great it is to be around me mark and so <laughs> things like yeah <laughs> And so when we did something at Northbridge and people already knew me and I'd already had a presence on stage for years and I said, hey, come do this thing with me, I forgot about all the structure and the advertising and the access. Well, we didn't do those things well. How do we get the word out? How is the class structured? How are we communicating it? How are we training volunteers? All that stuff was not stuff I really did at my old job. And so I got into these new situations. and I you've got a lack of competence and you've got maybe some... Some just difficult people issues that are going to trigger you. You've got this this guy who might be a Judas. He's stealing from your people or, yeah. or something like that. And then you've got just other other people issues that are testing you and saying, Gary, look at me. Take your eyes off the ball, off the church plant. Focus on keeping me happy. What is God doing to your soul while this is happening? Are you are you like, no, we can make it. This will be great. Or is, are you beginning to have doubts? I felt like I started to crumble. Because my a lot of my confidence was built on what I could do and not mm. on what the Lord could do. Uh-oh. And so originally when we had problems, when we when class didn't work or we had relational issues on our team, I thought I could make it work. And I would try to appease people. And I'm 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 a people pleaser. And so I was trying to make this guy who was hurting us, who needed a strong hand, a wall put up and yeah. said we're not going to receive this behavior. You need to come under discipline. We yeah. I, we eventually actually kicked that guy out of the church, which was a huge moment for us. Yeah. This other guy who was an uh, this older guy who I think was trying to do well, but was very argumentative and was competing for the vision of the church. I need to have a heart to heart to him and lay that out very clearly. Here's our vision. Here's what we're doing. Either you're with us or you're not. We're only like two months in. Yeah. But I didn't. Had you guys even had a service yet? No. Okay. So, so just to, to clarify for everybody, planting a church is redonkulously hard. When you've got drama from day one and you've got people trying to steal your money, I'm sorry, dude. Like, this is hard. Who it's, wants to join that? Yeah. Right? If anyone comes in, you're like, hey, we're a new church coming to town. What do you guys like? <laughs> Tons of drama. <laughs> People might steal your money, yeah, but you might like the senior pastor yeah. for a minute, right? Until you get to know him. And so we, I started to kind of fall apart, and I tried to lean on my own skills and found them lacking because what needed to happen was supernatural, not natural, yeah, right. I needed the Holy Spirit to go to work and create unity in our team. We needed to cast a vision that came from Jesus. We needed to hold to Scripture on how we're going to treat people who were trying to harm us, yeah. And we weren't doing any of those things. And I got so broken. And uh, I, I wrote this email to my old boss. It was one of those, I felt like the, I felt like a kid who realizes that their parents' life was harder than they, re- yeah. they ever knew. Right, right. Because I'd never really worn that mantle of the really responsible leader for the church. Yeah. And I wrote him this email that I was like, I, I can't do this. Like, this isn't who I am. And I, I think in that moment, I if you had looked at me, I had the resume for success. I had been on staff at a church that had grown. I could preach. I could raise money. People liked me. I could gather all those things. That resume was there, but my character was insufficient. Yeah. My dependency on Jesus wasn't what it needed to be. My humility wasn't what it needed to be. And I needed to fail. And so God's desire for the highly competent Gary Ritchie was, hey, man, I know you're competent. I know you're winsome. I put all that in you, but actually you need some humbling. Do you think, think, would you say, Gary, you need, you're, you've had so much success that you think this is partly your fault and you need to recognize success is from the Lord Mm. and you're not competent. And like, there's all kinds of gifts I did not put just in you. And and they're around people that now you don't have on your team. And I'm exposing where you're insufficient to bring you lower. I think I had devalued some of those other necessary gifts mm. in the launch process. And some people that I think would have stayed with us 
and helped us were what we needed because they weren't the kind of gifts that I value. Yeah. Didn't stay with us. Right. Because I, I, cause I didn't see it the way I needed to see it. And God had to really break me of that. Yeah. And because, and I remember getting to some really dependent days. We had, we had with all this work on the ESL class and nobody came to it. Right. So we had, you know, I had trained volunteers. We'd rented a place. And you know, when you're church planting, it's not like you have tons of money. This was a big swing for us. This yeah, needs yeah. to work. Yeah. And we get to the, the second day and no one coming. And I'm thinking about all the ways, maybe I'll just go door to door and I'm going to try this again. And the Lord's like, you need to gather your team and pray until someone shows up. And our team gathered up right. and, and we started to ask the Lord for it. I'm like, Lord, if you have no one for us, you have no one for us, but we're going to pray. I believe you do. And I remember we, we would just, we did, we would pray. We, the, no, it was supposed to start at 10. There was no one there by 11. And we prayed <laughs> and 11, 15, two ladies showed up. Look at that. And we, and we're like, all right, we're holding the whole thing for these two ladies and their four kids. Woo! And we do it. And I said, we need to start every day like this. Yeah. And we would get on our knees and ask the Lord for it. I said, every single person, you're the one who cares about people. You're the one who needs to bring them. We cl- we tried our thing. It didn't work. Yeah. Lord, will you bring? By the end of the six-week run, well, we had 30 students and 80 kids in that. Yeah. And it became a thing our church rallied around and that the Lord had written his name on. Yeah. It wasn't, what a great idea I had. It was, look what the Lord has done. And that became a, a moment for us to say, it's his church that he leads, that he's planting, that he's resourcing. I wish I'd tell you I learned that lesson and it never came back again. Yeah. But that was the first time that God said, mine, not yours. And I was about to go there because I feel like we we get that lesson, but there's something in us that fights that. It's the sinful nature that, that even when we know it, we fight it and the enemy helps us fight it. We resist it because there's something in us that, number one, I think wants the glory Many of us have people-pleasing issues. We want people to think that we're awesome. Even when we know we're not supposed to, it's it's this lust in our heart that I, yeah, but I kind of want you to, I still want to enjoy knowing that you think I'm a good idea. And so that's a part of it. What is the enemy telling us? What did he tell you back in the day? How does he keep us entrenched? Like, you know, the enemy whispers stuff to us. What is he whispering into our ears that says, actually, now you're fine on your own? Actually, no one's no one's gonna understand anyway. You you probably just better do it because they all suck and they're incompetent and they don't care the way you do. I think I mean I think that's almost exactly it, right? You have this moment of failure and then you have a choice of saying, let's do this God's way, or let me blame instead, or I can blame someone else. Yeah. I can say, you know what, this is because these people didn't do the plan the way I told them to do it. Yeah. You know what? Or I mean, I remember even that going, you know what? I really wanted to rent a different house in a different neighborhood. And this person talked us into this. And that's why this isn't going to work. <laughs> that's why we're cursed we, of God. Because we didn't do it 100% <laughs> my way. And I, I mean, I, that's a struggle. I think that's the thing Satan says to me. When we do have a failure or a struggle, my desire is to blame others. Yeah. If it didn't go exactly, exactly the way that I wanted to do it. And I, even when we do it exactly the exact way that I want to do it, if it fails, I'll blame other people's execution. Yeah. And I'll say, that I gave you a great plan. You just didn't carry it out. How do we you get know? past that? How do we, how do we resist that? How do we, how do we get some altitude above that? I think there's, there's, for me, the Lord speaks to me in when I'm alone. I, I, have to, I have to mark out time in my life to listen to him. Yeah. You know, that be still and know that I am God place. I have to allow myself to time to sit in his scripture and let him speak. I love doing Lectio Divina. I'm a Lectio Divina guy. Like I'm going to walk slowly through scripture and then ask the Lord to speak one of those scriptures to my heart. And I am over the years when I'm in that place of frustration, he'll call me to himself. Yeah. You know, my, my dad uh, used to say, sometimes you need a pat on the head and sometimes you need a kick in the rear. Yep. And I can mark out the moments of my ministry life where God would sit me down. And sometimes I'd get a kick in the rear. Yeah. And and sometimes when I thought I had a kick in the rear coming, he'd give me a pat in the back and he'd just lift me up and he'd go, hey, that wasn't on you. Yep. He's like, you were faithful in that. That failed. I'm working on somebody else. You just keep doing your thing. Hang in there. Don't give up. And there are other times when he goes, when he'd be like, you need to go make that right. So what I'm hearing you say is... There's got to be, we got to build in somewhere, especially when we've failed at something or to protect against hubris coming up too quick. There's got to be debrief sessions 
yeah. with the Lord. Lord, what do you say over this? I know what the enemy is saying. I know what my flesh is saying. I need to know your opinion because it's more important than everybody else's. Yeah. So that's really great. I think another thing that's, that's been helpful for me is, and, and, you know, I think you get older, you get a little bit older and you just start to rethink how you do stuff. And, and by the grace of God, sanctification is real. And so we, we ultimately do, even though it takes forever, we, we grow up a little bit. I know that even for me, just on Sunday morning, just, just thinking through, how am I thinking about these interactions? Hmm. Am I here to serve you? Am I here to like make it about you for me to get on your cheerleading squad so that like, Hey man, you can do it instead of like, let me give you some advice. So you think I'm awesome with my advice. Yeah. Let me like, <laughs> let me just, let me be a guy that's like waving the banner for you and saying, man, you are just so great. Well done. Here's maybe a, a verse that might encourage you or whatever, but just making, it's just a mental shift. I'm making it about them rather than my awesomosity mm. that will attract the judgment of God. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I also think back, I had, I was blessed. I had two guys who I trusted, who really walked deeply with Jesus, who I would, I, at some point just decided I'm going to listen to these men. And when they talk to me, I'm not going to, I'm not going to defend myself. So good, man. I'm just going to, cause they were, they had proven walk with Jesus for a long time, guys who had, who honestly loved me personally. We had a, we had a deep friendship in both those relationships. And so whenever they would talk, I would just hear this reminder, shut up and listen. Yeah. And reflect on what they're what they're saying to you, and that a lot age. of times that would, one of them was an older guy. One of the guys was my age, but he's a Christian counselor. He would see things I didn't see. One guy was this old saint who had this huge servant's heart, and when he talked, it was gold. He yeah. didn't talk much. Yeah, and and seeking him out and saying, "What did you see here?" And, and I think that's that, that's so essential. We need to put ourselves around both people that will tell us the truth because they love us, even if it's hard, but also just people that are. Oh wow, you're way smarter than me. Like, like just as a dude that might think I'm highly competent, yeah. I need to get around people that make me feel dumb because they're so much more godly than I am, but they're so, so much smarter than I am. Can I tell you a story that you're in? Is that okay? Sure. Yeah, yeah. All right. And Carter, did, we'll we see didn't, what happens. We didn't set I don't this know up. about this. So this is uh, about six or seven months ago. We had an opportunity come up to us as a church about maybe changing facilities. And I wasn't sure how to think about it. And there's this little, when you, we're in an old warehouse, looks like someone was killed in it. Okay. <laughs> and when you're in it, you, some, it's tempting as a pastor to think that your building is the problem whenever you have problems and think if only we were in a better building. Right. Yeah, yeah. And we had an opportunity that maybe uh, someone was going to give us a big track of land and maybe we could build a new building and do all this stuff. And I wasn't sure how to think about it. And we were at a meeting together and I said, hey, can I borrow you for a minute after the Do you remember this? I said, can I borrow you for a minute after the meeting? I think so, yep, yep, yep. And we sat down and I was like, and I told you the situation, and you organized the priorities of that situation in like five minutes. Wow. In a way that I had not done in months. And you were like, it sounds like what you're saying is this is what's most important, this is what's second, and this is what's third. If that's what you're telling me is true, then it sounds like you shouldn't take the land. You should invest in where you are and make sure you keep the culture that you have and stay out of that financial thing. And I was like, well, I could have talked to you a couple months ago. <laughs> stay with us. You know, because you, but you organize thinking in a way that I don't. And, you, and you're a guy who's been through building stuff that I haven't been through and, you know, taking on that kind of, you, you've had different experiences than I right, have. Right, right, right. And you're definitely a more structured, organized thinker than I am. You know, like, and, and we're in the studio right now and Mark has written up stuff that we're talking about. I would never do that ever. <laughs> it's nice, but I realize it's, it's good. I'm like, oh, this is good. I can just read stuff if I get lost. Yeah, yeah. I, so I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I know that we all, you know, the Lord just in his mercy just makes somebody wise for a couple minutes. But I think, I think you, you bring up a great idea, which is, you know, the person that thinks they're pretty doggone competent, they don't see the need to hear from God through other people. They don't, they don't ask enough questions of like, they're like, oh, I hear from God myself. And if God wants to tell me something, he'll just tell me. Oh. But when, when we've got that humility and, and we even maybe strategically know I'm inclined to think I'm self, to think I'm enough yeah. and I don't need to hear other people. So I just need to push this before people to say, God speaks through you and he does it to keep me humble. So yeah. let me bring you my stuff so that I can remember I'm not the jam. Jesus is awesome. And he uses my friends to speak into my life. Yeah, that's really good, man. I, it was, I was on sabbatical this summer, and I never get to go to other churches, which you don't either. Yeah. And so I went to eight different churches over the summer and visited, and it was great to go places and go, huh, that guy's a better preacher than me. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> or, man. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I didn't see anyone funnier than me, but I'm sure they're out there. They must be. They must be somewhere. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm not the sure. Lord didn't only make one. Yeah. There's like three of us. So, Gary, take us back to the moment. Now you've you've kind of fallen, you, or, or at least you, your hopes have been dashed. Yeah. You're writing the email, you know, to Pastor Mark in the middle of the night, and you're like, oh, "This sucks." And you, you're kind of writing home <laughs> to Daddy. You're like, "I yeah. got spanked." You know, <laughs> what would you say to you now if you could go back in time and say, "Gary, put your armor on your, sh- your own shoulder and be like, let me just tell you, man, here's here's what you need to remember in this season." Because I don't know that you would have said, at least talking to you, that you would have said, "Hey, man, at all at all costs, just don't plant the church or, or don't 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 yeah. fail." Instead, in the midst of failing, how would you encourage you? I think I would say, when you fail, yeah, right, understand that you need that failure to grow. Come on, somebody. You because you, <laughs> because your it's not your yes your skill set needs to grow, but your character needs to grow yes. along with it. Yes, and I, I mean every point. I remember you could echo this too. Every point of our church, there's been some stopping points in our growth, whether it was in depth or even in in love or, or service had been stopping points in my own character yeah. because I was immature and I, I think, and I needed failure and trial to grow yeah. because I don't pay attention otherwise. Yep. Yep. Right. What is it? See, so the pain is God's megaphone, right? Yep, yep. Uh, when I'm doing great, I have such a hard time working on areas of sin, areas of blindness Yeah. and God gets your attention. And I wish I would have heard that and said, when this trial comes, Take this to the Lord and say, how do I need to grow? Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. I think we all need to remember we have a heavenly father and he says he's going to discipline us for our good. And that just needs to be part of our paradigm when we're in it, when we don't have the clarity and the perspective that Gary has right now to say, oh, I must need this because I've got a good daddy. You know, the really prideful person is so prideful that they'll be like, I shouldn't need to be corrected for my pride. But that's... So what dumb. voice is that, by the way? <laughs> I shouldn't need to be connected for my pride. <laughs> but but you know, so so if that's any of our listeners who are, who are just like, well, you know, I'm, you know that sh- that shouldn't be me, precious, dear heart, you too, you mm. also need God's loving spankings from time to time well, to I, bring you low, so he, he, you can attract His grace because He gives grace to the humble. And I, I think at, at this point. Most of what I've had in the past is I said, okay, God's corrected me in this. And then I go back into situations where it's tempting for me to have a character fail in this way again. Yeah. I put myself back in a place where I need to impress people. Mm-hmm. I had a small story that not even ministry connected. We have people over our house all the time. and I like to cook, all yeah. right? I'm Italian. I think I'm good at it. And for a long time when people would come over, I would kill myself to make some fabulous meal when people came over. But if they weren't properly impressed, I would despise them. Yeah. And yeah, isn't that weird? Because they didn't worship the idol. Because they didn't worship the idol. Oh my gosh. Wait, this isn't the best tortellini you've ever had? Are you kidding me? Throw them in the fire. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Son, heat up the fireplace. (laughs) And my wife said to me, she goes, I think you'd be better off if you didn't try to impress people when they came over. Mm. Why don't we just get pizza? And then you can focus not on waiting for the compliment to come, and you can focus on the people who are here. People, oh my God. Now, obviously, she was wrong, but imagine imagine if she'd been correct. No, and that was such a good corrector for me. And I think that's the season I'm in now. Yeah. Where so much of my life has been about trying to impress and accomplish. And look, you're the pastor of the church plant, you do so much. I preach most of the weeks that we're doing stuff. I'm the, I'm the, the vision person up front, you know, whatever. And God's kind of moving me to say, this is, for, oh, first of all, it's always been my church. Yeah. And you need to move less, you need to move away from impressing and accomplishing yeah. more toward affirming and encouraging. Yeah. So that's really good. So we've got two humility reminders for the highly competent. The first one was you needed this. The second one, you or, or he is strong. And I, I feel like so often when we're going through trial, we're saying, he is strong. He is strong. You're like, he can get me through. I'm weak, but he is strong. Yeah. But, but I think in this case, what I'm hearing maybe the Spirit say through our conversation today is, he is strong. Yeah. And, and that's what the highly competent, they're, they're, they're constantly aware of or trying to prove, I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm good. And yet the, the lesson of the Lord, let me humble you. Let me bring you some humility so that you can get your confidence in the right person. 
<laughs> That's he so good. Is strong. I'm the God keeps he keeps putting the spotlight back on himself because it's healthy for us. Dude, no, you can't handle the spotlight. Yeah. Put the spotlight on me because I am strong and you don't need more you. You need more me. I mean, the desire is right, the de- but it's the the direction is wrong, right? Yeah. You know that what's that expression um Every man who's knocking at the door of a whorehouse is looking for God. Yeah, yeah. Right? I've got this desire in my heart for connection and intimacy. Right, right, right. right. And I'm trying to fill the wrong way. Like, I want to be part of this strong thing that's happening. I want to have confidence and victory, but not for myself. Right? I just, what I need to do is I want to, hey, I get to share in that. Yeah. Right? And you know, then, like, yeah, I, yeah. I was thinking about Colossians 3 the other day, right? He says, since then you've been raised with Christ. So Jesus' first play is, I share my resurrection with what? you. What? Right? I share. You're you're part of that, right? Yeah. yeah. He says, set your mind on things above. Set your heart on things above, right? For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God, yeah. right? I think, I, I think a lot of my life, I'm inviting God into my life mm-hmm. and saying, fill me, change me, shape Uh-oh. me. But I, I think the reverse, well, and I think that's true on some level, right? Jesus comes and dwells in us. But I think the reverse is, is somewhat more true in my life right now. Yeah. My life is in his life. It's his oh, life. Dude. It's his story. It's his glory. And I'm just, I'm, I'm inside of that. Yeah. I'm just with him in that. And this is the trick. This is the trick for the highly competent is you can be focused on. And even for those who are like, I'm trying to get better. I'm trying to always improve because on on some level, it's not that we shouldn't do that. That's good stewardship. That's great excellence. But the trick is it's still about me. I'm trying to be highly competent instead of getting Jesus story. Mm. Like, dude, what? You have Jesus. Hello. He's competent. (laughs) You don't need to add anything to, to it. Competent. Like he's, he's doing great on his own. So it makes me think a little bit about there's a guy that we both know now who's in the, pl- in the process who if you'd say, okay, does this guy have all the bells and whistles? You'd say maybe not. Yeah. But does he have faithfulness? Is his trust in Christ? Yeah. Absolutely. And that guy, that guy will see more ministry success. And probably more miracles. And more miracles. Because he's Jesus. Tr- yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <sighs> Gary, this is so good. Anything else that you want to share with our listeners? When I was in third grade, not to tell a story. No, I, uh, I want to encourage people who are younger, who are trying to get into ministry, to be patient with older people. Mm. I think I, I wish that our younger leaders were allowed me to make mistakes more and be show me grace as much as I want to show them grace. Mm. Mark is much more. Uh, I think you you kind of understand younger culture better than I do. I, I'm like a 46 year old who plays like they're 70. Like I should be driving a grand marquee <laughs> and I'm always appreciative when our young leaders give me the grace to be a real person who makes mistakes, Yeah. that I'm not always going to make the right decision, that everything I say isn't correct, that they give me that kind of grace. And so if that's, if you've got a boss or a leader who frustrates you to give them some grace in that allow them some space to grow. I think that's really good, man. I think I might speak to it from the other side and say, for those I've found that that are a little bit younger, who want to take some risks, who want to do great things for the kingdom, sometimes we can feel squelched or pushed down from older generations who are like, you're not doing everything right. You're not doing it the way that I would do it. And it comes off as though maybe the younger ones seem uncoachable and it's, I've not found that to be the case. I don't know that you've found that to be mm-hmm. the case. Most of the younger ones that I know, they would love coaching from people they believe love them. Nobody wants to be yelled at. Nobody wants to be complained toward, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think older folks in the upper decades of life, they're like, why don't these people do it this, this, or this way? And, and really, I think one of the reasons that's not working so well is because Jesus wants us to enter in. There's got to be that relationship of I'm with you and for you. And by the way, here might be a way to try this or do that. Yeah, man. Mm. Really good conversation. I like Thanks that. so much for having me on, Mark. Hey, bro. Thank you so much for being here. How can people get a hold of you? How can they find out more about New Hope? And listen to your awesome, funny messages. <laughs> uh, I mean, our website is newhoperoundlake.com. I don't know. You can you can uh, watch us on uh, we stream on Facebook I think and uh, probably yeah I'm trying to think of the thing I care probably the thing I care I, the most right I now. actually watch you on Facebook so I know that you do 
Oh, good. All right. So well, there we go. I have a hard time. Do you have a hard time watching yourself or listening to yourself? I do. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't like the like angle of the camera. I got to get away. I don't like the, it comes from below as you're, when you're a larger person, that's not an angle you want. I'm like, I want it, you know, cause I just want like just my eyes, yeah. you know? So you guys need a drone camera. That's what you need to fly around. <laughs> That'd be good. <laughs> that's on the list. We were like, we could, you know, we could serve the poor or get a drum camera. Yeah. Be I'm it. sure that's what the Lord wants. Yeah. All right, buddy. Hey man, thank you so much for being here. Talk to you. That was a good fist bump. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Bye everybody. Ah, that was such a good episode. Stay tuned for another best of episode coming soon. And if you'd like to learn more about Pastor Carter's sabbatical and how you can be praying for him this summer, just head to fierce.church sabbatical. Thanks for listening.